What is up everybody and welcome to the 10 Army podcast. This is a place where we talk about gaming stuff, news, just interesting stuff in general and tell each other our stories and share with our vibes. So today we're going to talk about Valve. What have they been doing right and wrong in Counter-Strike Global Offensive as well as Counter-Strike 2? And uh, yeah, what what do we think about that? So first of all, I want to talk about how Counter-Strike came into, you know, being a, a big part of my life, right? And most people know me from my Counter-Strike giveaways and stuff that I've been doing on Counter-Strike as well. You know, when I start playing a premier match, the first thing I, I hear is, hey, Wano, how's the YouTube channel going, right? So it's, it's something that's kind of embedded into my being at this point. Now, I've been playing Counter-Strike for about 5,000 hours now, so I have a little bit of history with it, but I am no veteran, all right? I'm actually somebody that's just been playing this game for... How many years have it been now? It's It's been about six years, five years, right? I started playing in late 2018, like September, August-ish 2018. So yeah, it's been it's been a couple of years. It's seven actually years, if I think about it correctly. Okay. Nonetheless, right? It's been, it's been a while, but I'm no veteran. I didn't come from Counter-Strike 1.6 or Counter-Strike Source even, though I did play it, but not a lot, right? I, I, I didn't know the game as people know Counter-Strike now. I knew it as a game that you have fun playing on LAN with your friends. That was literally it. Like, we used to play different modded versions of Counter-Strike where you're, like, playing in Afrikaans and people keep, like, swearing each other or at each other. So it was it was a different experience than what it is right now. Counter-Strike nowadays, as I know it at least, is a game where you play competitively, but more competitively than I would other games like normal people play competitive games you know semi-competitively it's kind of embedded into our souls but Counter-Strike has a way to push you past the boundaries and kind of make it like you want to be better and even if you're struggling like you can get up to a point where you're saying I'm gonna uninstall this game screw this game I am done with this and then you just keep on playing the game like <laughs> it's yeah the game has a weird way of just drawing you back right but in any case my journey with counter-strike began in 2018 i actually got the game from a friend called albert and uh, he bought the game because you know back then you had to actually buy the game it's not the situation where it is now where you have to like buy prime you actually had to buy the game and the only way you could have gotten prime was to actually work for it so you had to get to i think it was rank 21 if I'm not mistaken, like, I can be wrong. Somebody just, you know, let me know in the comment section down below if I am wrong. But yeah, I had to get to, I think, rank 21 in the game, which it was harder than you would think. Because for one, I was like thrown into the competitive scene. Like, like I wanted to play competitively from since the beginning and I did so, but it was kind of limited where you can only play two or three maybe comps a day. And then you have to wait like 24 hours. It's crazy. I think it might still be the case. But yeah, that, that, that was like the situation you were in. And while you have that, you had to work your way up to Prime. So you had to queue unprimed for how, Lord knows how many times. And just so you can get Prime and you can get an actual rank in the game. Then when you get the rank, obviously everything falls away and you can play the game normally. But it was a struggle. It was a different situation back then. You have to remember that back then, Counter-Strike Global Offensive was already pretty well established. Like, the game released in 2012. So, when I started playing the game in 2018, there was about six years of experience of people before me. And more so even people that came from, like, Counter-Strike 1.6 and Counter-Strike Source. Like, competitively at least, online at least. So, I had kind of a challenge that I had to overcome and it wasn't easy i mean i sucked at the game i genuinely sucked at the game up to a point where albert was actually uh, admitting to me later on and saying like he didn't actually want to play with me like it, it was so bad that it was like it's it's basically impossible to play with you bro like yeah but i didn't give up obviously you know i'm five thousand hours in right now and i've gotten much better i think i i hope so i would say one of the bigger things that kind of made me play the game better was 
creating my YouTube channel because I was about Nova 1, Nova 2-ish at the time that I created my channel in back in 2020 or started posting at least in 2020 and I think it was like two months maybe and I got to like MG or Nova Master maybe. I grew exponentially in skill the moment I was forced to be in a situation where I'm like, you have to look good, or that was at least in my head at the time, you have to look good in order for people to want to continue staying and watching your videos. And I remember my first video being just like a, the Nova 2 matchmaking experience type situation where I just like, I was Nova 2 and I just played a few like casual games and I recorded it with a GTX 1050 Ti back then which is crazy. I'm going to talk about the performance of the game a little bit later, but yeah, I recorded with the GTX 1050 Ti at the time and I just like mix mashed a couple of scenes together with like a no copyright sound montage. And even now when I look back at it, like you can see it's amateurs, but I'm, I, I always feel proud that that was my first video. Like it, it doesn't feel weird to watch that video as it would like most of the other videos that I've made, especially since, you know, I started using my voice and my face and everything in between. But yeah, that was that was kind of the, my like intro into Counter-Strike and it just, it, it's been growing exponentially since the release of Counter-Strike 2, creating even a more like competitive scene and people going crazy with the subtick system and everything. But yeah, let, let's get actually into Valve and what have they been doing all these years? As you know, Counter-Strike is kind of like a game where not a lot of things change. Like, if you look at Counter-Strike Global Offensive from like 2012 and you look at Counter-Strike 2 from now, the only big thing that I would say you would actually notice changing would be probably something like the graphics, maybe. Maybe things look a little bit smoother. But that is about it. Like, the game itself haven't changed much. And that is kind of the point, right? That's why people come back to Counter-Strike, because it stays the same, you know what to expect every single time that you start the game. It's as easy as that. And it's kind of funny, right? It's no mistake that that is the way that Counter-Strike was made. Valve knows exactly what they're doing. If you look at other games that Valve created, like let's say Dota, or maybe even the new release, Deadlock, right? It stays practically the same, like the base game will never change. If you look at Dota now and you look at Dota 10 years ago, it's still the same gameplay. The only thing they do change, you know, eventually is probably going to be the graphics, maybe a little bit of the mechanics, but like the base game stays the same and you know what to expect every single time you launch the game. Now, <laughs> needless to say, yeah, CS2 has a lot of problems, like the game itself has a lot a lot of problems but that not isn't necessarily like something that is valve's fault or it isn't necessarily something game breaking but let's start with it anyway first of all i want to get into the cheater problem like counter strike global offensive and counter strike 2 especially is kind of synonymous with cheaters if you think about counter strike 2 you think about cheaters but there's something in between that whole scenario People tend to antagonize Valve a lot when it comes to the cheater problem, but more than they deserve. Just hear me out, right? The cheater problem isn't gonna go away. Anytime soon. It's actually never. I can, I can say that with surety. It's never gonna go away. But that doesn't mean that Valve isn't working on the problem. They have been working rigorously with creating the best VAC system that they can, but the more they work with the VAC, the more effort they put into the anti-cheat, the more the people that create the cheats are just going to work to create a better cheat. It's never going to stop. Like, and, and that's something that not a lot of people understand. Like they, be, they tend to antagonize Valve and say that, yeah, well, you know, they have, they have billions of dollars. So they, ha they have the capacity and the ability to create the best anti-cheat possible. And sure... They can, they can create an artificial intelligent anti-cheat system, fucking chat GPT style thing. But that's not gonna stop the cheaters from cheating. It's not gonna stop the developers of the cheaters from creating cheats because they still get money to do that as well. Not, not every cheat is gonna be for free. I'm pretty sure all the premium cheats are not for free and that's something that not a lot of people think about when they think about the anti-cheat of Counter-Strike. One more thing would be with the, you know, the anti-cheat in mind, 
people tend to think that Counter-Strike isn't doing something because people aren't actively getting VAC banned. And yeah, it's something that's, you know, developing and changing over time. But that's not entirely how the anti-cheat works. I've said this in multiple videos before. The anti-cheat works primarily in a way where they take a bunch of people that they have seen you know, are hacking or are playing like hyper suspiciously or whatever that they detect cheats on. However, their algorithm works. And then they ban a bunch of them in a massive like vac wave or ban wave because they cannot ban one person at a time every single time. Otherwise, the cheat developers are just going to know exactly where they went wrong. And they're just going to change that around. Like you have to think about cheats as the same thing as like let's say a game crack or a pirated movie right pirated movies not so much but let's say a game crack how a crack works for a game is it bypasses specific functions that is for a game to verify that you bought the game basically like i i, I try to like break it down as basic as possible at the moment and that's the same thing with cheats it's verifying or bypassing the requirements of a specific system and that allows you to cheat or see through walls or maybe lock onto a system it changes some files and there you go voila voila it's obviously much more advanced than that but that is like the basic version of it let me know if i'm wrong but in, in the comments we can we can fight over that but yeah in, in any case that that's like the cheating system of counter-strike now are they gonna go away anytime soon no obviously not we've gone through that but it is going to get better up to a point where it's going to get like much more trouble for people to cheat in the game. Like you're going to have to get like the premium, premium cheats. Free cheats are not going to work forever. So don't worry about that. What we can do as players are just to keep on reporting. Just keep on doing our jobs. I know like a lot of people say and have the argument, which is fair, that you don't want to play a game to just report a bunch of people. You want to play a game to have fun. But to have fun in a competitive game like this... You're gonna have to make some sacrifices. It is what it is. Like, what can you do, man? What can you do? It's crazy. Now, I want to say there's something much more of a problem than the cheater problem in Counter-Strike. And that would be the performance. I've also talked about this in multiple videos myself because I am so angry. Like, I feel like out of all the things that Valve could have done, this is probably one thing that I would really want them to focus on, and that is the performance of the game. Now, you would think that because Counter-Strike 2 it, it has like better graphics than CSGO, you would think that it's like more GPU intensive, which ironically it isn't a lot. Like it is, but up to a point. It still stays CPU intensive, but for stupid reasons. Like they have to fix the system in a way or work on the system or optimize the system in a way that it can utilize more multi-core performance than the single core performance because uh, if you take an like an Ryzen X3D CPU or mm, let's say an Intel like i7 or i9 one of the newer ones with the like massive clock speeds or like the i5s with the massive clock speed like 5.3 5.2 gigahertz you can get crazy performance out of like an RTX 3050 or like a GTX 1660 Super, whatever. You can get crazy performance with that just by having a better CPU. Like I have a 3070 in my, my PC with a Ryzen 5 5600G, right? If I turn on my camera, like the one that, that you're seeing right now, for those of you watching, right? The video feed. If I turn on my camera and use it as a webcam while I'm live streaming, my FPS drops from 200 to 100 instantly just by turning on the camera. And that is because the camera is using 3% of my G I mean my CPU. It's that is horrendous. 3% difference and it destroys my game. Now, if I had a better CPU, let's say one of the newer i7s like a 12700K right I, that wouldn't have happened or wouldn't have happened that much i would have still gotten around about 200 fps in the game in like medium to low-ish settings easily but unfortunately that isn't the case so valve if you like by any chance have to think about something that you really have to focus on just do the performance 
Like, I understand you have your battle with the anti-cheat and you have your battle with everything going on, but just the performance would be absolutely amazing. Now, what have they done right? Like, I'm guessed, like, there's, there's obviously a bunch of different stuff in the game that they still haven't done right, and there's, like, bu bugs that they have to fix, and they introduce new bugs while taking out old bugs with updates and patches and stuff, but that, that's for another discussion. What have they done right? I would say the best possible thing that they could have done for Counter-Strike 2 that they have done is keep the game the same. Th this is something that I cannot stress enough. People do want to learn an entirely new game every time they switch over to like a different version of the game. Like they have changed some stuff, but not a lot. Like the base game still stays the same as Counter-Strike Global Offensive. I don't care what anybody says. Most of the reasons people are struggling are because of very small things like the subtick system being just a little bit different than the 64 tick system or maybe the sprays are a little bit more like the 128 tick version of the game or the servers it's like subtle differences right what they're also starting to do right is in fact the subtick system now when the subtick system got released actually even before it got released when it got teased it was this crazy awesome system get away with tick rates instantaneous shots you know all the promises were made and almost none of them lived up to the hype. You got shot instantaneously when somebody peeked you. The peeker's advantage was absolutely horrendous. Because you have to understand, when you're looking at a tick rate system, Counter-Strike Global Offensive servers worked on a 64 tick rate server, which meant like every 64 milliseconds, there was one tick. And a one tick is basically a packet that is sent from your computer to the server and then received back. So when you shoot a bullet on the tick that registers as you shot the bullet. Now, let's say you have two tick rates next to each other, or no, two ticks, right? Not, not two tick rates. When you shoot a bullet that's right after the one tick was landed, I guess you call it, right? Your bullet only registered when the next tick was there, right? So when you shot with something like, let's say, an op, you could shoot, flick, and then you would actually kill the guy if it was, you know, landing on the second tick. Where in Counter-Strike 2, you have the sub-tick system, which means that doesn't really apply anymore. So now you have to flick and then shoot instead of shoot and then flick. It's very subtle differences, but it's something that is actually kind of crazy, right? But that's, I mean, it, it's it's better. It's it's much better than it was when it actually first released. Like, like I said, the... Peeker's advantage was absolutely horrendous. That is basically fixed. Like, I I still get peaked, but now I can feel mostly that it might just be because of my ping, or it might just be because the other player is better than I am, which obviously happens quite a lot. <laughs> more things that I would say they did right was the fact that they haven't added more weapons in the game. Now, I, I'm going to get a lot of people fighting me about this, but it's something that I feel deeply passionate about. I'm not talking about like knife skins or different knives and stuff like that. I'm talking about physical weapons in the game because I am a firm believer that there are enough weapons in Counter-Strike 2. By far, you have way more than you need when it comes to the assault rifles, SMGs, shotguns, pistols. You have a gun for every single situation. You don't need more. For people who says they need the like scar Oh, I think it was like a Scar L or Scar H or whatever in the old Counter-Strike, like Source 1.6-ish. You don't need that. You have the Galil, you have the Cod Gun or the SG-553 if you want to go by his literal, literal name or like the AUG. You have guns for every single situation. You don't need more. There's something for, for every situation... There's something for every person. If you are a SMG lover, you have like five different SMGs you can choose from. And you can use like three of them at the same time in your loadout. You have like three, four different shotguns that you can choose from. I mean, isn't that enough? Something else that they've done wrong, actually, now that I think about it, is the fact that they don't give enough map rotation. Like in Counter-Strike Global Offensive, every now and again with a new operation or something, there was like a new map or new variation of a map, where in Counter-Strike 2, it does feel like things have gotten a little bit stale. Like, I, I, I think there should have been at least like three, four different maps 
in the past couple of months where the only new maps that we've been seeing is Pool Day maybe and one or two like Thera and the other map like the community maps that they Thera and Mills which they added in the game but that is like the first maps in basically a year that they've added in the game which is kind of insane like they, they have made some subtle changes don't get me wrong like let's say vertigo for example they made the change where you go from a ct side to a side secret or skinny or whatever you want to call that it goes by different names depending on who you ask they've made that subtle change which obviously changed technically a lot in the game and the gameplay but that only caused the game or the map at least to be picked like way less than it used to be picked in the majors i think it was the second to last major or the like the last one it was one of the least picked maps overall so there's a very high likelihood that they might actually just take out the map entirely which is kind of crazy but it's i mean it is what it is what can you do right when people say they want like cash and cobblestone and train back in the game i mean i feel you i really do I miss cash a lot. Train was one of my favorite maps as well. Cobblestone was a nice, like, casual map, but if for competitive purposes, it's absolutely trash. It's very, very one-sided. It's not a good map competitively. But I do feel you. Like, I miss the maps. And I, and I know for a fact that cash is going to make a return. Like, if Impon, I think, is the creator of cash, he is still working on the map. He has released some updates, at least, which is kind of cool. But Cobblestone, I don't know. I like. I think it might get released sometime in October, like around about Halloween-ish, because it is like a common Halloween map. Train, on the other hand, I haven't heard much about, to be honest. Like, I hope they bring it back because it's like an OG map and it's it's a cool, it's a fun map to play. Even if they just release it for like casual or something, that would be kind of cool. But yeah, that's basically it for the maps. Uh, one thing that I actually wanted to touch upon, which I, I almost forgot about that, is something that I would like them add, not in Counter-Strike per se, but it was a Counter-Strike game mode. You all remember Danger Zone, right? Danger Zone is a Battle Royale style Counter-Strike game mode where it was almost like an entirely different game because it felt different, but yet similar because they used all the mechanics and like the graphic style and everything of Counter-Strike, but it was a Battle Royal, like Fortnite, Call of Duty DMZ style, you know, gameplay. I would like them to bring that back, but not in Counter-Strike, but as a separate game. Just hear me out for a second. Not a lot of people that play Danger Zone like the competitive style the plant the bomb or hostage rescue situation that Counter-Strike gives, but they do like the whole like Battle Royale style gameplay. It's it's a fun game mode to play overall, but it's not the same. It's it's too much of a difference when it's compared to something like Counter-Strike Global Offensive or Counter-Strike 2. I would say take it out of the game, release it as a separate game, but in the same universe. Because it's going to have a player base that's, uh, that's going to grow from nothing. And it's going to be completely separate from Counter-Strike. And it can even be like a marketing thing for Counter-Strike if people want to get into Counter-Strike. Which obviously I know it doesn't need that because Counter-Strike is like the second or third biggest multiplayer game in the world basically at the moment. Or on Steam at least. Uh, set for PUBG which is massive and I haven't played that <laughs> yet. Just on a side note. Just take Danger Zone, create an entirely separate game, standalone game from that, and let it just grow to be its own beautiful thing. I'm pretty sure that would be successful. That that would be my one dream for, for Danger Zone. I would pay that. I don't know if you would. In any case, that's basically it for today. I just wanted to create like a pilot-ish episode for the 1.0 Army podcast. Uh, just so you guys know kind of what to expect, but this will probably be more online in the future like i i'm planning on doing this on live stream with different people coming in uh you know viewers actually just jumping in because i'll be on discord and people can just freely join in so 
yeah, if you guys want to want to see that or just want to join in on that, let me know in the comment section down below and we can maybe find a specific day for every single week to do that because that would be fun. We're not only going to talk about CS and stuff like that, but we can talk about basically anything, right? I've got a lot of stuff to share. I've got a lot of stories and I'm sure you do too. But with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed. And I've got one question for all of you. Do you want to play?